Companies typically have a lot of data out there that could benefit from some of the chat capabilities available in AI today. That's what we're gonna look at in this video. So if you had a bunch of PDF manuals or Word docs or even HTML, markdown files and others, what if you could actually chat against those so that your users could ask questions against those documents and not actually have to scroll through every page or do a manual search? Well, we can do that with Azure OpenAI and bring your own data. And that's what we're gonna look at here. Now to get started, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up the Azure OpenAI resource. If you want a more detailed video, go check out a previous one I did. In this one, I'm gonna go through it super quick. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is just type OpenAI. We'll select that, and then from here, we'll create the resource. Now that that's created, let's go ahead and go to it. And the first thing we're gonna do is go to Model Deployments. This will take us into Azure OpenAI Studio. And I'm gonna click on Create New Deployment. And I'm gonna select GPT-35 Turbo. Now I'm actually gonna create two models and I'll show you why, but I'm gonna go with the default, name it the same. So let's go ahead and create that first one. And now I'm gonna create another one because this can be used for vector-based searching. And this is a different model called Ada. So we're gonna select text embedding Ada. We'll go with the default. And then I'm gonna name it the same again. And we'll create it. Okay, so now that we have our models, let's go into chat. Now as a heads up, right after you create the model, you typically can't chat, even though it says the models are deployed, we need to wait just a little bit of time, but luckily we have some other things we're gonna do to demonstrate the bring your own data feature. Now I'm gonna scroll up to the top though, and you'll notice that I have add your own data preview. And we're gonna add our own data source, and we're gonna select what do we wanna do here? Do we already have a cognitive search out there? Do we already have blob storage out there? Well, I don't, I'm just gonna upload files. And what I'm gonna need to do is either pick from some existing storage or create a new one. I'm gonna create a new one in this case. So it looks like that's been created. So I'm gonna come on back, we're gonna hit refresh, and we'll select that. All right, now you do need to turn on cores access to make this work, so you just hit the button here, turn on cores, and there we go. And the next thing I need is a Azure Cognitive Search resource. So I'm gonna click Create New and do the same thing. So that's all being completed. We'll say go to resource and you can see we're good to go. So now we'll go back again, we'll hit refresh and we'll go ahead and select that. Now the next thing I need to do is give it an index name. It is a search, so therefore we have indexing of documents going on. I'm just gonna call this open AI index. Now from here, I can add vector search capabilities. Now earlier, I added the text embedding ADA002 model and that's why is because this will help us with that. Once we've selected that, I can acknowledge that, yeah, there's gonna be some charges for this, of course, and hit next. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is upload our documents. So I have two documents. One is how to install a clock. I literally used AI to generate it. So it's AI using AI, some inception going on. And then I have a company FAQ document. And this will answer questions that customer service reps may have. So let me go ahead and upload those. All right, those have been uploaded and we can move next. Now the next thing is what type of search do we wanna do, keyword or semantic? Now if we select semantic, I can acknowledge here, hit next, and then we can save and close. Now you might wonder though, what is semantic versus keyword? Well, keyword is what you would expect. If I type clock, it's gonna search specifically for parts of the document that have clock. Whereas if I type time, well, time is semantically related to clock, therefore it may find some references. Kind of like dog and cat, yeah, they're different, but they're both animals. They're semantically equivalent if you look at it from an animal perspective. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go with semantic in this case and acknowledge, and then we'll hit next, and then we'll save and close here. Now what's going to happen is this is now going to index our two documents, and that'll take just a bit to go through. But once that's done, we should be able to come down to our chat and ask questions against those documents. Okay, so it looks like our indexing process is done. In fact, you can select this to go get some information about your index. But normally, based on timing, we can now come down to the chat and start asking questions like, how do I install a clock? Let's go ahead and run this. Now, you'll notice we get an error. Notice the message up here. It says, semantic search is not enabled for this service. So what we can do is go back to the portal. Let's just do that in a separate tab. I'm going to go into my resource groups. Mine is sandbox. And let's just find this in here. And there it is. Now you notice we have semantic search. I'm going to go ahead and select this free plan for here. And there we go. We now have selected it. So if you get that, be aware, it might take a little bit of time for it to catch up when we get back to the chat. But that's what you can do if you get that type of error. Now I'm going to come back in. Let's clear the chat out. And we'll do the same thing again. And depending on timing, we might need to wait a little bit. So be aware of that. OK. And this is what you should get. So this is actually pulling information from my document. All of this was in the actual Word doc or PDF that I uploaded. And you'll see down here, here's a reference to that document, actually, and we could open it from here. But this gives a nice summary, and I don't actually have to go scanning through that document myself. Now let's go ahead and clear this. And let's do, how do I process a refund? This is in the other document, which is the FAQ for customer service. And there we go. If a customer requests a refund or wishes to return a product, blah, blah, blah. Notice here we have the company FAQs doc that we uploaded. Now this is all great, but at this point you're probably like, okay, cool, I can't let my users just run to the Azure OpenAI Studio, obviously. Well, you'll notice a couple things. First off, right up top, we can actually create a new web app. If I come on down, you'll also notice view code here. We could programmatically call this API. And so when they type something in a custom chat box, we could run some code, whether it's they have Python, C Sharp, and then just curl or JSON here. But let's say you're doing a .NET app. Well, this will give you the starting code to actually call this API, send up that chat, and then get back the response. But if you don't even want to do that, and you just want to create your own app, we can say deploy to a new web app, and then you can come in and create that web app. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like it's done, so we can launch the web app. You can log in using the same account for the portal. And there we go. We now have an actual chat app that we can embed or use in some other app if we wanted. Let's try it out. How do I install a clock? And we get the same exact result. So with very little work, you can actually get this going get your documents out there, and allow your users to chat against those documents. Really, really powerful, and this is just going to get better and better over time, of course. So thanks for tuning in, and check out the other videos in my channel.